Ooh, what's going on people it's your man the yb back once again so we've got a mad situation for you man right now regarding Baturbiev versus bivol 12th of october 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 2024 in ridia saudi arabia you best believe it so obviously we've got the main event but now prince turkey sheikh salman Mohammed bin has leaked and ordered the undercard officially no one seems to have thought it's a leak for you man the yb putting you man he's steady putting you man you best believe it so oh look at the garments these man are wearing as well look at these this is proper clubber that's what i rate about the saudi cats as well yeah there may be some listen people turkey he ain't beating the allegations when they come out in a few years there's gonna be a whole bunch of madness anthony johnson is gonna be on camera saying oh man you know I thought I was going to his hotel room. I thought he was taking me to his house to talk about the oops. And that was his backside. It's good. That's definitely coming, right? He ain't beating allegations. That's for damn sure. Same as Diddy. We know, they stuck. <laughs> so forget about that. That said, though, as far as boxing goes, this guy Cole, look at the, look at the garments. they got Baturbi of him. He's got the dirty face, the dirty ear. This is proper. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's fitting as well for this type of fight. In my opinion, it's no good putting Johnson in these garments. Because he ain't a warrior like that, right? Johnston would have been essentially one of the homosexual whores on the battlefield. Or in, in, in the, what do they call it, a battle brigade or in the battalion. And there's, apparently, yeah, the Roman cats, they'd bring an X amount of man with them, 20 man deep. But there'd be certain men that would have the hookers and the man whores. And Johnston, he'd be more like that one. He'd have the long hair and the pink lips because he's soft, right? Stop playing. He ain't going to be in this kind of garments. He ain't going to be in warrior garments. He can't fight like that. He can't fight like that. He's only good for punching something. He can't take a shot and fight back. So forget about it. He ain't in them garments. Yeah? He be holding down the troop after battle. Tending to their wounds like a nurse. Right? Or tending to their other needs. That's what he be doing. He, he, to be fair to Johnson, his role in a war, he would be essentially putting the team on. He'd be putting the battalion on. Yeah? he be putting on for the team. Right? So each role within a unit, within a war unit, plays their role. Johnson's role wouldn't be this one, though. No. He wouldn't be garmed up in the big lion things and whatever else. Because he ain't a fighter like that. Anyway. Well, what's going on with this situation now? Okay. Look at Bivol's kit as well. Look at this, people. This is proper, man. This is proper. This is mad. They've even done the whole... Kind of Viking, what do they call it? The Viking lettering, text style, proper hard. They've got the mountain in the back. Anyway, the undercard. So we got Shakur Sleepvanson as the co-main with Joe Cordina. Not a bad fight, although I would have preferred. Oh no, Kakachi's fight in Warrington. I think that's on September twenty-first. Kakachi has a bit. Listen, Cordina's not bad. He'll come to fight. He lost though, but still, it's not a bad fight. Cordina can squabble. Cordina really has. He's trained by Tony Sims. Um, has a similar style to Conor Ben. Um, so it's not going to be a bad fight. Obviously, you got Shakur Stevenson winning. In fact, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to do it right now for you, man. Is look up. The bet. Uh, let me think. Bet fair. You hear people. You know that's coming up recommended. You know that. Let's not cap here. Let's not pretend like it's not in the favourites. Let's not pretend like it's not riddled for the YB's history right now. This is not the stop. I could sit and say, no, oh, I'm changing my ways. And, you know, do you know what I mean? Michelle's blocked up. Michelle's blocked the website and banned it. It's not playing out. You know it's on there. And you know we're going to fix this at odds right now. That's what we're going to do. Boxing matches. I want to see what they got. Where they got Shakur Sleepman's on here. Okay, here we go. Here's the card here. So we've got Shakur. Oh, there's no money on yet. That's mad. Um, Steven, that's mad. There's normally some coins on already. So you got anyway, Steven. Oh, well, since I'm here, actually, let's talk about Arta Baturbia Bivol. So you put a tenner on Bivol right now. You get ten pound and sixty p profit. You put a tenner on. What's going on with this? This is mad. Basically, it's fifty fifty. That's mad. What's going on with these odds here? Someone's cleaned it out. But essentially, it's fifty fifty. You put a tenner on Bivol, these are wrong. Oh, them odds are wrong. That's wrong, but yeah. 
essentially you put a tenner on Bivol and it'll be about a tenner back, ten pound fifty or something like that. It's Vinny Vindy. You best believe. I got a bill saved up. The YB's been scraping his coins and I got a bill saved up for Baturbia. Yeah, I'm putting a hundred bucks on Baturbia. He's beefing the smoke, dude. I like Bivol, yeah, but he ain't Baturbia, man. The only thing about Baturbiev is he is long in the tooth now. He's 40. But still, Callum Smith said that, and he had Tony Ballou crying on the, oh, man, he off the gear because he punched up the Liverpudlian. Oops. Come on, man. Tony, Callum Smith didn't get down like that. He didn't. Callum top, what whooped him, and he didn't want to fight. So stop playing like like Callum Smith down like that. Right? And that's Carrot Top. Carrot Top ain't even that hard, is he? And he got wounds in a bib he didn't want to fight. So he ain't even that hard. But Baturbiev, he want to fight. Bibo, he don't have the power. And he can be aggressive, but he was in there with a bum in that, some Libyan bum. It's a Muammar Gaddafi bum, essentially. And um, he got caught a few times, and he fought strong. But again, he, who was he fighting? We don't know. Yeah, that was the first stoppage he's got in about a million years. The narrative is, well, he's training for power now, and he's going to match Baturbiev. You can't train for power like that. It's inherent within you. Um... And I do think, I mean, I like Bivol, but I think Baturbiev is more, he's more muddy. Yeah, he's more Genghis khan Is that the part of the world? I'm not even sure, but let's call it Genghis Khan. He's more Zarian than Bivol. Bivol, he'd been living in the States a little bit too long. It's a bit like that other cat who fought Terence Crawford. What's his name? I've got his name now, but that cat there, he'd been living in, in the States. He'd gone soft. Yeah, he gone essentially blue haired. He didn't want to fight. The cat that was fighting Terence Crawford the other day, he didn't want to fight like that. He was was fanning around because he become, he's become the United States of I S R A E L. That's what he on now. He wanted blue hair. He just want he fanning around. So he's no good. Baturbiev with it. Dimitri Bivol is not like Terence Crawford's opponent, but there's a is a he's not Baturbiev is the part I'm making. Baturbiev he really living like that in my opinion. I'm biased though because I've been saying for a while. He fixed him to smoke with Bivol. But to be honest, I'll be happy to lose 100 bucks on Baturbiev. Assuming he comes to fight, which I believe he will. Yeah, Bivol's so explicit, exquisite, sorry. That he's able to box Baturbiev's head off. Salute him. Right? And that's all we can ask for is that a man goes in there and fight. And I believe Baturbiev will. And if he's in there trying to fight, Bivol's going to get caught. But Baturbiev will get caught. And we'll find out. There's a possibility here. People will say, oh, people should have walked down Floyd Mayweather. It's a bit different because Floyd's feet and his reactions were someone else. But Bivol has good footwork. And also, the correlation I'm trying to make is between Floyd's power and Bivol's power. Bivol's not an out-and-out -out puncher, but he ain't that sweet. Because there's loads of not out-and-out -out punchers, yeah, who Canelo just walked through. For whatever reason, Canelo, people say it's the weight. I don't believe so. Look at Kovalev. Canelo had no problem just walking, putting it on Kovalev. He was getting boxed. He had a box off, in my opinion. But he had no problem just having his hands up and walking towards... Canelo wasn't walking down Bivol like that. So I do believe there's an element and a possibility that Bivol does have power. It's more like Floyd Mayweather power. The power that no one really tried to... Apart from De La Hoya whooped his ass. De La Hoya whooped Floyd's ass. Stuck it all over him. Didn't care about his moody power. But Floyd... Clearly, he kept... Carrot Top didn't want to put it on him. Mr. Fake Mexican style. He did not want to fight with Floyd like that. He was standing there like... Arr! He was getting boxed up, so... Most people, a lot of people who fought Floyd didn't really want to get on him like that. Maidana did, to be fair. But these aren't pound. Maidana's not a power for pound guy like that, right? And that's the only criticism of Floyd. Floyd had power versus old 39 year old Mosley versus B level dudes. Yeah? That's Robert Guerrero, Andre Berto. These are B level dudes who have been beat. Floyd's only ever beat, I think, one undefeated guy. I think it was Canelo, or one undefeated champion. I think it was Canelo or something like that. He had never he fought a bunch of old people, a bunch of dusties. Yeah, Floyd Dusty, whoever. That's what he was renowned for. He'd fight people who had five losses before and they knocked out four times. Right? He wasn't. Look at his resume. He talks about, oh, I've beat the most world champions. If you look through the list, they was all like thirty-two and four, thirty-two and three. They weren't. To be fair, like even Canelo was doing. Canelo was punching up popping cherries, Billy Joe, Plant, whoever else. He'd been popping cherries. Anyway. That's Baturbia Bivol. The next fight, Shakur Sleepvinson versus Cordini. Now, uh, the reason I want to see the odds are, odds, is not just because I'm a gambling fiend, which is most definitely true, I ain't gonna lie. 
But also, I'm, I want to see when it, I'm not really sure about where the market's at on this one. You've got to have Stevenson a favourite because he knows how to bore the head off people. And he's all, Stevenson also came out in the last day or so and said, oh, I'm done I'm done trying to please the fans. I think it's probably because he's in, in his first decent fight. I'm done. Oh my God, he's a huge favourite. Joe Cordina, people. Joe Cordina is 9-1. to one. So you put a 10 on Joe Cordina, you get £90 profit back. You put a tenner on your course sleeping son. You get less than a pound back, people. This must be like what? You put a tenner on your course sleeping son, you get like 60p back. That's mad. Is it that bad? Yeah, it is. You put a pound on your course sleeping son, you get like 60, 70p back. Wow. I'm not going to be doing that. Not because I think Joe Cordina is a big favour, but I thought it'd be more even. I thought it might be like, I don't know, Joe Cordina 4 to 1. Not 9 to 1's like you've got no chance. Ngannou was like a 9-1 to one with Fury. Maybe, is that telling? I don't know. Listen, I wouldn't get involved in this action at all, is my advice. Because I think Sleepmanson knows how to bore the pants of anyone. And Cordina, he's alright, isn't he? He's alright, but he's not, his levels. So yeah, but I don't know how people, these odds mean there's individuals out there, yeah, actually put, and if you put a grand on your course Sleepmanson, you'd get £65 back. Seventy pound back from a grand. Who gonna do that? Any accident can happen. We've been seeing that with Johnston versus Mr. Blobby. Whoops. I bet there was a bag of money for yeah, 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 yeah. I'll make my little ten percent off this Mr. Blobby looking ass. Oops. Lost the whole bag. <laughs> anyway, so that's that fight. It's okay. Um I mean yeah, anyway, that's that fight done. Now you got Chris Ubambi versus Camille. Don't tell me they've put the bums on here. Don't start. Don't tell me they've started doing that, man. It's gonna neck me out. If this, I've never heard of this cat a day in my life. If this cat is a bum, yeah, this is the start of the end of Prince Turkey. I'm telling you now, because he's already started pandering to the names, and that's how it all starts, people. It starts off all grey. You put the banging cards on, and next thing you know, you start for saying to yourself, "Well, I want Chris Eubank, and he don't want to fight a real fight, and he's gonna fight a real fight next time." So I give him the bum fight, and before you know it, they all wanna fight bums. You can't let the bum... Prince Turkey, yeah. You can't let the bum culture seep in. The minute you start pandering to fighters... He should have told Chris Eubank. If you want to fight a bum, yeah, go with Carla Snifferland and fight on a bum Channel 5 channel and then when you're ready to come here to fight someone proper, let me know. I'm not putting on... I've never heard of him. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's some hardhead from Kazakhstan. And if he is, fair play to him. But let's have a look. Um, Camille... In fact, you know, let me look at the odds. Eubank versus Sirs and Max, a mad name. Let's have a look. It might even pop up on here. And we'll know by the odds. Although, Terence Crawford was a massive favourite. And that didn't end up so well. So we'll have to check the guy out. I need to watch him on the film. I won't do that now. But Oh my God, people. Oh my God. Oh my God. Chris Eubank is twice as much of a favourite as Shakur Seatmanson is. Yeah? If you put a 10 and people listen to this. If you put 100 quid... I can't even think. It, the odds are so small. It must be half, so it's 35p. If you put... I think it's less than that. It's like 50p or something. 40p. It must be. Anyway. You put a tenner on Chris Eubank. Let me change the odds to decimal. I can't really interpret these mad ones here. I'm not going to lie to you. But yeah, we go. You put a tenner on Chris Eubank. And you get 40p back. You put 100 quid on Chris Eubank. You get 4p back. Look at the odds, people. Sorry, 40p back. A tenner... On 100 quid on Chris Eubank, you get four pounds back. This is a complete bum. Turkey, what are you doing, bro? And it's number three on the card. Yeah, what are you doing, man? Just take it off. Honestly, yeah, I feel at this point in the game, there's a whole bunch of other cornballs who can do these bum fights, man. It's supposed to be Saturday Premier. And I had a worry last time. Not even a worry last time. I think it was the AJ card. The AJ card versus Dubois. It was weak, man. It was lacking. It was a bit like, mm, I think, the what was the co-main for that? Oh, yeah, the co-main was Warrington versus Kakachi. It's like, really? When you think about the 5v5, that was like, bars, 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 bars. And yet, you've got your third support, or second support, in a fight which is a 25 to 1 fight, essentially. Yeah? This guy is 12 to 1. It's ridiculous. It's annoying. Why do that for to the people then? 
Why, why, why bother doing it, man? It's whack. Ain't no one trying to watch that rubbish. <gasps> that said, so my advice would be get rid of Eubank, man. Go fight a real fight, man. What have you been doing? You've been Connor Ben's Connor Hen's been chasing you down with the moody eggs. Yeah. Who else offered you a fight? Carrot Top offered you a fight, and you didn't want to fight him, or you thought he was worth more. You ain't come on, Eubank. Go get that. Go get that. Cinnamon bun looking ass. What are you doing? Let, again, the light skin cat. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. They be corny. That's the truth of the situation. A lot of light skin man be letting me down. Because you the only really when you look through this this card, you the only one fighting a bum like that. You're you're thirty five year old or whatever. You're established. Everyone else getting it in, and you fighting a, a, a Kazakhstani cab driver. That's what you doing, Chris. Look at the card. Everyone else taking penitentiary chances. Shakur Sleepinson, okay. But still, it's a deep. Cordine is a well known guy, right? He's not a, he's not a Sir Rometta. Hello. Wardley and Fraser Clark, penitentiary chances. Opatia Massey. Opatia is going to be the favourite, but Massey ain't. He with the shits. He come to fight. Ben Whitaker, Liam Cameron. Mr. El Sniffo. Yeah. Ben Whitaker versus Liam El Kinahan Cameron. I'm glad Cameron's getting put on. He was done nasty by the establishment. Sky Nicholson. So obviously, Eddie Hearns patterned up his, his new thing. Patterned his new thing up with a body to catch. And then, okay, obviously, again, Turkey putting on the Mohammed cat as well. Making sure his people can eat. Respect that. Love that all day. No doubt about it. So, Chris Eubank, get him out of here. That's the truth, people. I like Eubank. Get him out of here, though. Not, this, ain't, this ain't the place for that, man. Go, you, you've been doing that, Chris. You've been fighting bums. You've been doing that. Don't bring that over here, man. You let him, you let him, you know what I mean? You're diluting the quality. Take it somewhere else, Chris. Piss me off. With your light skin looking ass. You think you, that's the problem with the light skin cats. I told you this before. Chris no doubt came to Saudi, yeah, with his light looking skin. And Turkey thought, I have to have that one. Yeah? I have to have that one. Oops. So Chris is there strutting his pretty looking light skin ass out around the place. And Turkey thought, I want to have that one. And Chris said, hey man, put me on. Give me a bum to fight. And Turkey was conflicted. Yeah, he saw them sweet light skin cheeks. But he also saw... The fight's a bit dead, and more time, we know, what, what do we know about people? What do we know about? Your, your mind and your ting, for real, for real. So, you, you know what Turkey did? Bosh. That was Chris's ass, And he on the card, ultimately. Right? Because Turkey, there's no way, people, Eddie Hearn said, Turkey's a connoisseur. Turkey ain't, he ain't doing crap fights. Oops. So don't tell me oh, why be you bugging. There's no way Chris got popped in Saudi, because well, what was the other motivation? Turkey ain't been putting these 25 to 1 fights on. He has not. So why is he doing it now for? He paid in cash or kind, or he paid in kind. Yeah? He kindly paid his ass up, is what he did, in my opinion, allegedly. Well, some people are saying. I don't think he did, but some people are saying, allegedly. Anyway, Fabio Wardley, Fraser Clark. <laughs> um, Fabio Wardley, Fraser Clark. What's the situation right now with this one? Where's my odds thing gone? Okay. This is another interesting one to be. This should really be co-main. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, Cordino and you. You have to have 50-50 fights on the co-main. Is it Fraser with a Z? Yeah. I don't know. I won't be betting on this fight. I think I bet, or I certainly backed Fabio Bigley. Um, but I won't, I don't know. Fraser's jab was was. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, Fabio Wardley is a strong favourite. Not strong. You put a tenner on Fabio Wardley, you get six pounds seventy back profit. So that means, what's his name? Fraser Clark will be, you put a tenner on him and you get about 14, 15 quid back. I'm, I'm guessing it'll be something like that. You get 14 quid back for putting it on Fraser Clark, but Fabio Wardley is a decent favourite. I'm not, I'm not taking that. That jab I saw, if Fraser Clark could keep his jab going, he'd have won that fight. He started trying to do everything else. That jab was deadly and it was quick and he was making um, Wardley look silly. So the, I don't know what these odds makers want. This fight for me is 50-50. If anything, gun to my head, yeah, I'd have to lean towards Fraser Clark because Fraser Clark also doesn't have as much top-level experience. That was his first top fight. So he's going to grow more than that. Yes, Wardley was pushed too, but he'd had more big moments. That was Fraser Clark's first big moment, so I, there's more upside on him, I'd assume. Plus, obviously, he's amateur background. And I, I never, I'm, ne I'm not one of them cats who believe it matters, but it showed in that fight that something matters. I thought Wardley going in and swing on him. But all that loose as a goose business, it didn't really work out too well. Although he caught. He caught Fraser Clark. 
to be fair, because he does have the power, but when you're throwing your people, real due respect, when you're dropping your hands to your waist and sling as hard as you can, everyone got power. Right? And that power's all good till it's not. But yeah, who knows? Interesting fight though. Um, Jared Pataya Massey. Again, I think uh, is going to be a big favourite. Not as big as the Eubank or Stevenson situation. Uh, what's Jack Massey? 4 5 to 1? I'm going to throw it out there. Wow! I'm wrong. This fight is as bad, apparently, as the. Um, this fight is as bad as the Eubank fight. So you've got 11 to 1 underdog, Jack Massey. You put a tenner on Jared Pataya. And you get 50p back if he wins profit. You know what I mean? I don't know, people. It feels like a bit of a fall off to me. I think the problem is, to some degree, Turkey needs to bring Bench along in. Yeah, but obviously there might be political reasons he can't do that. Eddie Hearns alluded to the fact that Bench along don't want to don't want to work with people, but that's what he needs to do. Why? I think Bench along's got he's got Chris Billing Smith. Has he got two belts or whatever? So. It should, I mean, I, I, I don't, again, I think maybe Turkey has diluted it too much. Yeah, in my opinion, the whole point of the events, they had one event in October or November, I think, 2023, then one in March. That five, six month period means you can reload the fighter stock. Most fighters want to fight every, f well, three to six months. When you're going, what have they done? They've done a madness. They've gone November. March, May, June, uh, August one as well, and then a September one, then an October one. Naturally, when you're doing a card every two months, yeah, your fight you can't your stock of fighters have has depleted, which means you have to make these. Oh, to be fair, I think the odds are wrong here. You know, Jack Jack Massey and a punk. This is a four to one underdog here, not a twelve to not eleven to one. Sorry, that's ridiculous, but still. Seeing so many of these fights be 10 to 1 underdogs, these are dead certs essentially. Again, I think this is wrong, this particular fight, but the other ones, whatever. Um, certainly the Eubank fights are 10 to 1, 12 to 1, 14 to 1 fight. I mean, you want to watch that crap. The whole point is they're competitive, and the 5v5s, for me, that that's the basic principles. That's what people want to see, man. Every single one of them fights was banging. Every single one of them fights could have been a, a co main, or sorry, a main event. Right now, we're going to see, based on the odds, we're going to see Jair Patel wash this guy. Um, it's going to go down, let's go down the list a minute. Let's see what happened. So you've got a great main event, for sure. That's 50-50. But then you're going to have Shakur Stevenson bore everyone to tears with Joe Cordelia. You're going to have Yusha Chris Eubank beat this guy up. That's another 50-50. So you've got two 50-50s on the card, and the rest are bums. That's the facts, people. You got how many cards, man? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight fights, and you got two fifty-fifties and six fillers. Nah, that's a bit unfair. Cordina versus Sleepvinson isn't a, isn't a, a filler. That is a filler. Chris Eubank versus this cat is a filler. That's not really a filler either. I'm giving respect to Massey. I watched Massey versus Chamberlain, but Chamberlain isn't the most high premium. But that was a good fight. Massey and the punk. And I think Jeff, I think the punk is in Jeff Attard, to be honest. He talk a good game, he look hard, but when Braders is putting it on him, man, Jack Massey need to go in there. What's the guy's name? Gallagher something. Gallagher need to put Jack Massey on, man. Stick your hands to your head and walk this pussy down. He don't want to fight. What's the Braders fight? He was scared to death to exchange a Braders. Just jumping on the spot. Like a jippo. He don't want to fight like that. Put it on him. He's soft. He's sweet, in my opinion. He got all the hype, yeah, but he didn't want to fight Braders. He didn't. <laughs> He shit himself in the last few rounds. So get him out of here, man. I'd love Jack Massey to go in there. Because Jack Massey can squabble. That fight, Massey versus Chamberlain, was a proper fight. A proper fight. Jack Massey want to fight. Opatai don't want to fight. So put it on him. Take him where he don't want to go. He, Jack, Jack Opatai wants to jump on the spot and just piss around. That's what he want to do. He don't want to fight. That's a fact. So get him out of there. I'd love Jack Massey to stick it all over him. At least have, Jack, at least have a go, man. You're here now. All right, just have a go. Put it on him. And I think he'll fold. Because Bradis is 40 years old and put it on him and he, f he was half out of there. Looking like he's about to cry. He wanted out of there. He didn't want to fight. That's what I'm sure. You can't. I've never seen. Or I'd, certainly in that fight. That was the first fight I watched of his. Jeb Patar don't fight on the inside. He kind of jumps in. Gets some things off and runs off. And if you're on top of him, he shits himself. Don't know what to do. Yeah, he's a runner. To put it on him, make him uncomfortable. He was super uncomfortable. Even if you think he didn't shit himself against Bradis, yeah. He was damn sure uncomfortable. 
So put it on him, make him uncomfortable. If you sit at mid-range, run a box of him, he can do that all day and you'll lose for sure. You've got to get on him. Anyway. So yeah, you got, I mean, what? 50-50 here. Mm, boring fight here. Filler. 50-50. Potentially, could, if Jack Massey don't come to fight, he can get his head boxed off. So this could feasibly be a boring fight. Jab a tire, jump on the spot, and just pissing around. Boring. Liam Cameron, I haven't really watched him, but I assume it's going to be one of them ones. Another another filler. Let's put Whitaker in. Let's see what the odds are. It's going to be like a 50 to 1. Ben Whitaker versus Liam Cameron. Hmm, 10 to 1. 10 to 1, or 9 to 1 underdog. You put a tenner on Ben Whitaker, you get 80p profit back. So again, massive favourite. Um, it's not it's not a good look, man, in my opinion. Most of these fights, I'm, I'm not even look at these fights, but these will be the same thing. 10 to 1 favourite, 10 to 1 favourite, 10 to 1. How many 10 to 1 favourites plus have we got, essentially? One, two, three, four, five, six. So out of a out of a eight out of an eight fight card, six of them are ten to one favourites. Turkey man, you fell off. I'm sorry to break it to you. You'd be better off. People are already saying your eight fights is a lot of fights, man. It gets a bit longer than two. Turkey would be better off, number one, I believe. The Saudi shtick, yeah. It should be quarterly, at the most. Every quarter we do an event. And it's all well scheduled months before. Or well, everyone knows it. So that, the, so that the fighters have in their minds, oh yeah, it's a turkey date coming up for March. Or it's a turkey date coming up for July, June. So you know when to be ready. All this loose as a goose, people ain't necessarily ready or whatever else. Get in a cycle kind of thing. Like Canelo, he fights May and he fights September. Get, in that, get that kind of rhythm going. Not more than four cards. It's not feasible. You don't have, there's not enough fighters like that. Top fighters to make finger licking cards the second advice is cut these cards down man i guess the thing is he's trying to put the bums on as well he's trying to put the up and comers on but do that somewhere else man eddie hearn still has the zone cards right frank warren still has moody bt slash he might be coming to the zone cards bob aram still has the moody espn cards put these cats here Mohammed, sky and ben whitaker put them on them moody cards man until they're ready to fight until Ben Whitaker's ready, yeah, to squabble with Anthony Yard or that kind of calibre, put him there. Don't be filling up here with your bum fights. I don't want to watch it. I'm not interested. I'm not. To be quite frank. And even Jair Patar. I mean, I, forget about this fight. I think, I think Jack Massey will come have a go. So forget about that. I'm not going to slag that fight. But Chris Eubank, go to Sky, man. Go to Moody Channel 5. What are you coming here for? Taking up the airwaves. This, this card, really. I mean, if I'm honest, it should be two fights on this card. If I'm strictly honest, it should be Baturbi at Bivol and Fabio Wardley versus Clark. The rest of them sit down somewhere. Just do, like, do you know what I mean? Obviously, that's extreme, but I'm saying, rather than do an eight-fight card, if you can't fill them in, yeah? If you can't make an eight-fight card, make a four-fight card of actual quality. Or even a three-fight card. Yeah? Starting at seven o'clock. Bosh! A good fight. Bosh! A good fight. Bosh! People ain't really looking to sit there all night anyway. The other night I was up at, it started at like 6 and it was on to about 3 o'clock in the morning. It's a bit long in the tooth at that point. Just get in and get out. Bosh! We start at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock. That's all we need. No one were really fixing to be sitting there from 6 in the afternoon to 2 o'clock in the morning. Who want to do that really? You lose, the, you lose the energy. Plus, when half the fights are boring slash white watches, who want to... It's not as... That 5v5, man, I was hard as rocks, mate. Yeah? Michelle, know, she knows that one. You best believe it. No doubt about that one. You ain't got to be doing these kind of every month shows that are whack. People, we all love every day. At one point, so again, up until this, up until the Johnston card in, Sept in September, they was wicked. The August card was essentially the peak. That little run we had of March, May, June, August was banging but you've blew your load now and it's starting to show because the AJ card is weak you've got Warrington versus Kakachi number two that's weak I, this is weak right then you've got this card which is weak then you've got a December card to fill you're watering yourself down man four, four shows a year and 
no more than five or six fights tops and if you can't fill five or six fights do four or three or four man quality because you've already got the outline here but tell Bivo, Wardley Clark and then make another two bangers like that they haven't all got to be world class level look at Fabio Wardley Fraser Clark that's a solid fight right but it's not even about really the level of them it's, it's the it's the it's the evenness we know Fraser Clark and Fabio Wardley are fixing to fight their heart out. We know Perturbio Bivol fixing to fight their heart out. We people should call sleep and he's fixing to put people to sleep. Eubank looking for easy payday again. Yeah. Now obviously Ben Wick is still trying to build and whatever else, but he shouldn't be on them cards. These are premier Saudi cards. Go to Skyman fight bums. Right? Fight bums there. Don't be coming over here and watering it down. And the minute the water seeps in it. You can't stop it. And this, I, I'm going to be honest with you, this is starting to look now like a traditional boxing card, right? You've got a big headline, and then it's 10 to 1 underdog fights for the rest of it, essentially. You can argue, well, Shakur Stevenson versus Cordina would be a headline. It wouldn't be one no one fixing to watch. That's for damn sure. No one's going to be staying up to 4 in the morning to watch that, all due respect. Apart from a few Welsh cats. Let's be realistic here. No one's going to be standing up to watch that one. Woodley versus Clark. Woodley versus Clark is a Sky main event. That's what that is. It's not really one of these ones. Sorry, it, it, it is, it's in the mix on these ones. Uh, that's a lie. It's, this, this, it, that fight does make the cut. But the rest of them, man. We, anyway, that's my advice. Let me know if you want to smash the like button, subscribe, like the bell 100%. No doubt about it. People, stop it now.